Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, we're going to graph linear inequalities in two variables. So, you, the student, will check solutions of linear equalities. We will graph linear equalities in two variables, and you will use linear inequalities to solve real life problems. So, our question today is how can you graph a linear inequality? I want you to be thinking about what you know about graphing a line, and we're going to apply that to graphing a linear inequality. So, what exactly is a linear inequality in two variables? It is a mathematical sentence in the form ax plus by is less than c when a and b are not both zero, and c can be any real number. The reason that a and b can't both be zero because if you had zero times x plus zero times y, you wouldn't have a linear inequality because there would be no variable. So you would end up with a statement of true or false fact that a number is less than another number. This inequality symbol can be less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. A linear inequality in two variables has a solution set. It is a region that defines half of a plane. So it doesn't matter if the line passes through the origin and seemingly to your eye cuts the coordinate plane in half or that it's really uneven because you just got to remember that the coordinate plane extends infinitely in all directions. So it doesn't matter where the line is. The line is cutting this infinite plane into two half planes. So anything that is shaded in the plane is the solution set. So the difference between this and a number line when you learn to graph just an inequality such as x is greater than 2 is that we now have two unknowns. We have an x and a y. It's a two-dimensional plane, and we graph the boundary line and shade in the solution area. So any ordered pair in this shaded area is a solution to the linear inequality in two variables. Any ordered pair here, as we said, including this boundary line. So you'll learn in a minute that the boundary line is either going to be solid or dashed. If it's solid, any point on the line is also part of the solution set. So every linear equality in two variables graphs as a half of a plane. And then we need to understand that the inequality symbol less than or greater than, the boundary line will be dashed seeing as it can't be equal to. It's either less than those values or greater than those values. So we put a dashed boundary line and it's not included in the solution area because again, it's not equal to. It's either less than everything on that, from that line on or greater than from everything then that line on. If the inequality symbol is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we're gonna have a solid boundary line and any point on the line is part of the solution area because it can be equal to. So to determine which half of a plane to shade once you've graphed your boundary line, you're going to do a test point. When you put the test point into the linear inequality, you're going to test it. And if your statement comes out at the end to be a true statement, then you know that that ordered pair is part of the solution area because it makes that ordered pair makes the inequality true. So you shade whatever side of the boundary line that is on because it's part of the solution set. If the ordered pair that you plugged into your inequality that you're testing came out to be a false statement, then you're not going to shade that ordered pair. That is not part of the solution set. So you would sh shade the opposite side of the boundary line. And we'll model this today. So first, let's talk about determining solutions, because this is how you would know how to test a point. So technically, right now, we're testing a point. And what you're being asked is, is this ordered pair, negative 1, 9, a solution to this inequality? So you're going to want to evaluate this inequality for a value of x being negative 1 and y being 9. So we'll replace x with negative 1 and y with 9, and we do the math. Negative 2 plus 9, 7, less than negative 3. 7 is not less than negative 3, so therefore this is not a solution to this inequality. Your turn.
Please pause and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So we're going to evaluate for x being 2 and y being negative 2. So 2 subtract 3 multiplied by negative 2. And we're going to question, is that greater than or equal to 8? 2, negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. 2 plus 6 is 8. And 8 is greater than or equal to 8. Since 8 is equal to 8, this is true. And this is a solution to this inequality. So that's how you're going to test a point. You're going to pick a point. So let's review um, just graphing in general. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to graph this. First thing I ask my students to do is just graph it. Ignore the inequality symbol and just graph it as it were a line. We're noting that it can be equal to, so it's a solid line. So just go ahead and graph the line. So when you do that, we know that it's going to be a horizontal line passing through the y-axis at 2. So you're going to draw a line through and crossing the y-axis at 2. And now we need to test a point. I'm always going to test the origin if it's not on the boundary line. If it's on the boundary line, you don't want to pick that test point. So we plug in 0, 0. And 0 is less than or equal to 2, so it's true. So I know that this point has to be part of the solution area, and you just go ahead and shade in everything below the boundary line. So this is technically your half plane, and it represents your solution area. So if you're asked to graph this, you must have the shaded portion and the boundary line. Your turn. Please pause, graph this inequality, come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So when we're going to do step one, our graph is going to be a vertical line passing through the x-axis at negative 4. It's a solid boundary line because it can be equal to. And we're going to check our test point of 0, 0. 0 is not less than or equal to negative 4. So therefore, the origin, the point 0, 0, is not part of the solution set and you're going to shade the other side of the boundary line. Now, if you're nervous about it and you're not quite sure, you could check a different point. So let's look at negative 6, 0, which is clearly in the shaded area. Negative 6 is less than or equal to negative 4, so it checks out. So if you're nervous, you can always check a second point. All right, let's review now graphing a line with both x and y. Okay, so again, Pretend that this is a linear equation. Ignore the inequality sign until it's time to do a test point. The only thing you want to note in advance is that this is greater than. It can be equal to, so the line that we draw has to be a dashed line. So I'm going to graph it with um, a dashed line since it's greater than, and I'm going to graph using intercepts. So I could plug in 0 for x and solve for y and get 1. I can plug 0 in for y and solve for x being negative 2. And I can graph my intercepts. So 0, 1 and negative 2, 0. And there's my line, and I'll make it dashed. Or you could have solved this linear inequality for y, putting it in slope-intercept form, knowing that your y-intercept is 1 and a slope of 1 half, and then draw in your dashed line. Okay. So however you chose, choose to do it, whatever your preference is for graphing, there's our boundary line. And then we move on to a test point. 0, 0 is not on the boundary line. So I'm going to use that as my test point. When x is 0 and y is 0, I get that 0 is greater than 2. 0 is not greater than 2. So therefore, my test point is not in the solution area. And I'm going to shade everything above my dash line. So this is my solution. Your turn. Pause, graph, test your point, and shade. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So here we go. Step one, I graphed a dashed line seeing as it's less than. I solved this for y, which would be putting it in slope-intercept form. So y is greater than 1 half x. 
and here's my y-intercept of 0, rise 1, run 2, here's my dashed line. I can't test 0, 0 because it's on the boundary line. So I'm going to test the ordered pair 1, 1. For me, that's the next easiest point. So replace x with 1 and y with 1. 1 subtract 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 is indeed less than 0. It's true. So 1, 1 needs to be in my solution area. So I'm going to shade everything above the boundary line. So now you're given a graph of a linear inequality and you're asked to write the linear equality that represents the graph. So go ahead and take a shot at this. Hit uh, pause, come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So again, I'm going to ask, I always ask my students to identify the y-intercept and the slope Oop. and then we come back and we put in the inequality symbol. So I go over to my graph and my y-intercept is negative three. And I identify that run, rise one, run one. So my slope is one. And I know that it's gonna be less than or it's gonna be greater than because I have a dashed line. So now I just need to pick a point in the shaded area. I chose four zero. Four zero right here is in the shaded area. Again, you can pick any point in the shaded area. And I plugged it in. So when x, when y is 0 and x is 4, 0, this needs to be a true statement, right? Because this ordered pair is in the solution area. So I need to make sure that this final is true. So when y is 0 and x is 4, I get 0, question mark, 1. So I know that 0 is less than 1, and it has to be true again because I chose a point, a test point, in the shaded area. So I now know that it's y less than x minus 3. So let's go back over here and check that. My y-intercept is negative 3, and my slope is 1. And I'm going to test 0, 0, and it should be false. 0 is less than negative 3. Not true. So I know that I now have the correct inequality to back this up. So once again, go through and find your slope and your y-intercept plug in your test point and make force this test point to be a true statement and that will give you your inequality as to whether it's less than or greater than and the line being dashed tells you it's not equal to. If it was solid, you would know to put an equal sign there. So that's our lesson today. We were shading half planes for our solution areas. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel please and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the lesson. Have a great day.